Imagine the melodious sound of water dripping from leaves, the wonder of colorful orchids sprouting from every rock, tree trunk and branch surface amid lush evergreen vegetation as clouds gently swirl among the branches of mysterious trees. You are in a tropical montane cloud forest. These wondrous formations are found in mountainous areas and are very different from lowland rainforests. They get their name from the constant presence of clouds or mist that cover the vegetation. Cloud forests consist of a single story of trees or trees of the same height such as clusias and podocarps. The high moisture levels in these forests promote a rich biomass and diversity of epiphytes such as orchids, bromeliads, lichens and mosses which cover tree trunks and branches and an abundance of ferns and flowering plants. Cloud forests are rare. They make up just 1% of the world's woodlands and are found predominantly throughout the tropics. There are 272 cloud forest sites in the Caribbean and Latin America. These include the Mont Trois Piton of Dominica, Canuco Mountains of Guyana, El Tucouche in Trinidad, and La Tigra National Park in Honduras. The appearance and form of cloud forests vary depending on altitude, temperature, cloud cover, soil conditions, and exposure to prevailing winds. They are formed essentially by the movement of air currents to create clouds, and basically the clouds would release moisture onto the forest itself. Um, creating condensation um, on the leaves, on the various epiphytes, bromeliads, orchids that are found, and these waters water are retained within the, the forest itself. The tall trees of the multi-storied lowland rainforests gradually give way to new forest formation called the lower montane forest as altitude increases and temperature drops owing to the air cooling as it rises. There is also greater exposure to wind at higher elevations. The average canopy height of forests in the lower part of the montane zone is up to 35 meters, with individual emergent trees as high as 45 meters. As one moves upwards in the montane forest zone, trees become gradually smaller and mossier. Here we are walking along one of the trails of the Blue Mountains. We are about 1,500 meters in elevation and as you can see the vegetation is dense there's nice lush vegetation it's green and clearly we are almost up into the clouds as we see the clouds rolling by us the classic structure of a cloud forest is much more a stunted vegetation and that's, it's stunted for the main reason is that there are lots of clouds. When you get lots of clouds, the light levels fall. And so if you get a cloud forest, you would get much lower levels of light. Because of this, the plants don't get as much energy to live. So they can't grow as tall. They simply cannot photosynthesize enough to grow into very tall trees. With increasing elevation, wetter soils, exposure to clouds and wind-driven fog, the tree trunks become increasingly crooked and their gnarled branches form dense, compact crowns. Bamboo often replaces palms as the undergrowth species. It is this eerie impression of a tangled, stunted mass amid the fog that has given rise to the name Elfin Woodlands, as cloud forests in the uppermost montane region are called. The altitudes at which cloud forests are found vary considerably. On large inland mountains, they may be found anywhere between 2,000 to 3,000 meters, whereas on coastal mountains or those of small oceanic islands, the zone can descend to 1,200 meters. Under exceptionally humid conditions, a cloud forest may develop on steep tropical islands or coastal mountains such as El Tucouche of Trinidad and Mont Trois Piton of Dominica at elevations as low as 500 meters. All cloud forests have an important role in stabilizing water quality and maintaining the natural flow patterns of the streams and rivers originating within them. These cloud forests are very important in collecting water from the clouds. They form a locus where uh, water can condense on and run down the trunks of the trees or drip down onto the ground. And they've estimated that if you remove those cloud forests, 
the amount of water which could be derived from these streams and so on can drop by up to 33%, up to a third. So these, are these areas of cloud forests are very important when it comes to things like water production. This results in stream flows from cloud forest areas that are greater and more dependable in dry periods. The profusion of beautiful epiphytes growing on tree trunks and branches in cloud forests plays a big part in the abundance of water supply. Epiphytes make up about one quarter of all cloud forest species and they capture water directly from fog and clouds. The water stored in epiphytes has been calculated as ranging from 3,000 litres per hectare to 50,000 litres per hectare. Approximately half of the total input of valuable nitrates and other ions and nutrients to the forest can come from water derived from clouds by epiphytes. Water from cloud forests is a vital resource in many regions since it is available year-round and is unpolluted. For example, in Honduras, the cloud forests in La Tigra National Park provide over 40% of the water supply for 850,000 people in Tegucigalpa, the capital city. Cloud forests are very important in the reduction of flash flooding because they ensure that the water that or rainfall that occurs is collected percolated down into the water table instead of just basically running off into our streams, removing soil and um, creating havoc in the lower elevation. Cloud forests are also sites of rich biodiversity and provide a habitat for many of the world's threatened and endemic species. Species that are endemic to an area are those found in that specific area and nowhere else. We have many endemic tree species within our cloud forest. For example, our podocarp, which is an endemic species. We also have, as well importantly, we, the soapwood belonging to the Clethra occidentalis. And also we have our tree ferns, of which we have several endemic species that are found only in the Blue Mountain region. The importance of cloud forests for the conservation of biodiversity is demonstrated by the fact that 86% of cloud forest sites are found within the global 200 priority forest ecoregions that have been identified for conservation by the World Wildlife Fund. 97% of the cloud forests in the Caribbean and Latin America are found in bird endemic areas. 10% of the world's endemic bird population are found in cloud forests. The endemic species known as the golden tree frog can only be found in Trinidad's northern range cloud forests. Cloud forests constitute a highly unique ecosystem accommodating endemic species that can be found nowhere else in the world. This is because the ecosystems that surround them are generally warmer and drier. Because of their uniqueness, cloud forests have also been called sky islands. It is important to note that cloud forests are also the natural habitat of the wild relatives of many crop species such as tomatoes, avocado and coffee. They are therefore a critical gene pool which will allow for the continued improvement of these crops. Other products from cloud forests include medicinal plants, fruits, herbs and game meats, as well as ornamental plants like tree ferns, orchids, bromeliads and mosses that can be harvested for the horticultural market. Well, here's one of our endemic medicinal plants, commonly called headache bush, and so named because it has a nice aromatic smell that basically cures your headache. It can also be boiled into a tea and perform the same function as well. So, another important medicinal plant, headache bush. These forests are also very valuable for ecotourism. In general, cloud forests face many of the same threats to their existence as other tropical forests, but their unique ecology and their location on mountain slopes make them particularly vulnerable to some deforestation forces and especially to climate change. The use of cloud forest zones for commercial activity is posing serious threats to their survival. The greatest of these threats is the complete clearing of forests for farming. Much of this activity is done by small-scale farmers for subsistence. However, commercial coffee production is also done on the lower slopes of many cloud forests throughout the world. And in some territories, the commercial production of fruits and flowers is expanding into cloud forest areas. The biggest threat would be man, and man in many forms. Man in directly 
going up and trying to, to light fires, maybe even, um, uh, it would be difficult for fire to get out of control there because they tend to be damp all year round, but man can still do damage, man can go there and kill things. You, you know, just a, you know, a determined hunter going up there and, uh, and excessively hunting will, will uh, upset the balance. Another threat would be uh, logging. Logging, uh, people have gone into logging tremendously and we're trying to discourage that. Uh, and that is, uh, people should not cut uh, wood uh, carelessly and the, to, to uh, damage the forest that we have at the moment. Infrastructural development is another cause of great concern for the survival of cloud forests. The construction of roads through the forests and the laying of pipelines and power lines have led to the fragmentation of habitats. This has had a great impact on the ecology of the remaining segments of cloud forests. Species of birds and animals living in these forests become more vulnerable as their habitats are diminished or become more accessible to predators. Larger animals in particular are at greater risk because they require larger spaces in order to thrive. It is being predicted that changes in temperature and rainfall owing to man-induced climate change will drive some cloud forests to extinction and force others to spread to higher altitudes. There are also natural threats to cloud forests, a significant one being the alien species that invade habitats. An important invasive species and threat to our cloud forests are, is the Australian tree, um, commonly called wild orange or pitosporum which again does the same similar things as invasive species by creating large forested areas of itself, monoculture, and reduces the level of biodiversity within these cloud forests and basically changes the ecosystem and the habitat type that is associated with the cloud forest. Balancing the needs of man and mother nature is central to mitigating the threats to cloud forests. It may be necessary to establish various categories of protected areas in order to meet the demands of the local situation and culture. Protected areas include nature reserves, national parks, biosphere reserves, and protected watersheds. Two emerging trends are the creation of more privately owned reserves and the establishment of community and municipal reserves, often on the land of indigenous peoples. Reserves are important since many cloud forest sites throughout the world are significant eco-tourist attractions owing to their pristine beauty, rare birds and other species, and breathtaking mountain environment. In Trinidad, hiking tours to El Tucuch are very popular. These are usually conducted on either private reserves or community and municipal reserves. Restoration has become a necessary part of maintaining the ecosystems and biodiversity of these woodlands. If there are some surviving trees, natural regeneration is a preferred method of restoration. The survivor trees enhance the arrival of seeds via fruit-eating birds. They provide shade and regeneration of interspersed patches, and they stimulate seed dispersal for rapid regrowth of the dying species. This results in the re-establishment of a forest with effective biodiversity and nutrient conservation and a high degree of protection of soil and water resources. These magical woodlands, shrouded in mist, not only captivate the imagination, but serve important environmental and socio-economic functions for humanity. So let us all work together to preserve this rare natural wonder of the Caribbean.